Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to clear up all the doubts about running the game on different emulators. I personally tested each configuration multiple times, one by one, and I'll walk you through everything in detail. But if you're just here to copy the settings and jump straight into the game without worrying about the technical stuff, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps in the description. I also highly recommend checking out the section on which emulator to choose to get the best performance on your machine. So, the first thing most people look for when choosing between these two emulators is, which one delivers better performance? And honestly, the answer is way more complex than it seems. It all comes down to your PC's hardware and how each emulator utilizes specific components of your system. Depending on your setup, the game might run exactly the same on both emulators. In that case, what really sets them apart is how each one handles the game during actual gameplay, not just what synthetic benchmarks might show. So moving forward, I'll guide you through which emulator to choose based on your PC specs and also share what I'm currently using myself. Now, for those of you with more limited setups, like older CPUs with 4 cores and 8 threads, or 6 cores and 6 threads, or anything below that, I strongly recommend using the Eden emulator, specifically the RC2 version, which has fewer reported bugs like flashing and visual glitches in this particular game. Honestly, this recommendation applies to pretty much any machine. Eden relies less on having tons of threads and cores, which usually means better FPS and, more importantly, smoother gameplay with faster shader loading and fewer stutters or freezes. Of course, this isn't a hard rule. I'm mainly talking about older processors, especially those from before 2013, which often lack certain instruction sets that can significantly impact performance. Newer CPUs like the i310100F or Ryzen 3500X, even though they're 4 8 and 6 6 respectively, tend to handle things better and can deliver solid FPS. That said, there's still a chance they might perform worse on reubing or experience more stuttering with it. And finally, a super important disclaimer, on every system I tested, enabling the option, use asynchronous shader building, hack, in the graphics, advanced tab causes the game to crash immediately on launch. The only fix is to delete the emulator folder entirely and never turn that option on. So please, avoid it at all costs. Continuing on, the differences between the emulators now become more subtle and depend entirely on the pros and cons of how each one runs the game. I can't just recommend Ryujinx for stronger processors, because at this point, what really matters are the bugs and glitches you might encounter. Keep in mind that, as of the time I'm recording this video, the game still hasn't received any developer attention for fixes. That's why performance benchmarks are pretty much useless right now, and there's no reliable FPS patch available either. For performance insights, check out the shorts I'll be posting soon. But I also plan to release a more detailed analysis and a guide to help you optimize visuals and get the best FPS possible. I'll explain why some machines, even if they're theoretically powerful enough, might still struggle to reach ideal performance. One of Eden Emulator's biggest advantages when it comes to FPS is in busy scenes, like when there are lots of NPCs, events happening simultaneously, and complex environments. In those cases, Eden pulls ahead of Ryubing by around 8 to 12 FPS. In more remote areas, like the ZA Royales, the difference is much smaller, usually around 2 to 5 FPS. On Ryubing's side, I noticed a huge advantage in terms of stability and overall smoothness during gameplay. When it comes to loading shaders, it doesn't freeze the game nearly as much as Eden does. It's worth pointing out that this could be due to the fact that I'm using a CPU with a high core and thread count, but I still think it's something worth highlighting because it really adds to the gameplay experience. Rain, if you've been watching closely up to this point, you've probably noticed that Eden RC2 has a lot of advantages. It's genuinely a great emulator with a solid team of developers behind it. 
but the reason I'm using Ryubing for this specific game comes down to the issues I'll explain next. Let's start with the biggest problem most people face when trying to run this game. It has several launch issues, especially on Ryubing, where having DLCs or updates installed will cause the game to crash and fail to start. The only workaround is to launch the game without any DLCs or updates. Even then, crashes still happen. The most serious one occurs when you reach Kalos and try to enter the region, the game just crashes. The only way around this is to have a save file with that part already completed. You can do this using a Nintendo Switch or the Eden emulator. But I've seen a lot of people struggle with these steps, and let's be honest, it's annoying to set up two emulators just for that. So, I'll be providing two save files, one with the male protagonist and one with the female. Their names will match the official names given by the developers, and the customizations will be based on the trailer. I'll also include other useful links to help you out. Speaking of bugs that aren't performance related, Ryubing does have crashes beyond the initial ones. I personally experienced two crashes during the first ZA Royale battle in the tutorial. But after restarting the game, I was able to get past that part. Then, when arriving at Hotel Z for the first time and waking up, there's a crash during the cutscene that I could only bypass using the Eden emulator. The good news is that I played for several hours on Ryubing after that, and no more crashes occurred, the experience was smooth and satisfying. Going back to pros and cons, Ryubing showed significantly lower GPU usage, at least with my graphics card. That's something to keep in mind, especially if you're using frame generators. The GPU usage was lower particularly when using filters like SMAA and FSR on both emulators. Now, the biggest downside of Eden emulator is something that tends to happen with newly released games on emulators. The longer you play with the game open, the more bugs start to appear, and FPS can drop, even if just slightly. In this case, Eden already shows more visual bugs like flashing and broken textures. But after running it for about an hour, I experienced full-screen vertex explosions, making the game practically unplayable. That was my personal experience, along with reports I've gathered online. So for now, I'm playing the game on Ryubing. Up next, I'll show you my graphics settings and briefly explain each one. Starting with the CPU tab, a lot of people might avoid tweaking this section because it's extremely unstable and to be honest, it didn't give me any real FPS gains. However, enabling this option significantly improved my game's stability and shader loading. The gameplay felt smoother than on Ryubing. Just be careful when adjusting this setting. When I first tested it, it worked fine at 18,500, but now it doesn't anymore. It's highly unstable and requires fine-tuning, but if you're willing to experiment, it can be worth it. Moving on to the Graphics Advanced tab, the first setting worth editing is ASTC Recompression Method. If your GPU is crashing while the game is running due to low VRAM, read through the available options and choose the one that best fits your setup. For those with GPUs that have 8GB of VRAM or more, it might be a good idea to set VRAM usage method to aggressive. The rest of the settings in this section can be understood by hovering your mouse over them, they're mostly focused on performance and shader loading. One setting you should approach with caution is Force Maximum Plocks. It puts a lot of stress on your GPU and should only be used with AMD GPUs, as it can provide a noticeable performance boost. Enable Reactive Flashing might help with stability, but it can reduce performance. In my experience, it's not a critical setting, so it's really up to you. As mentioned earlier, enabling use asynchronous shader building hack, will crash the game and corrupt the emulator instance. Keep it disabled until it's fixed. The settings below that should definitely be enabled, especially Vulcan Pipeline, which will save your shaders and prevent future stutters. The other options improve accuracy and performance as well. As for the standard graphics settings, 
they're mostly self-explanatory. Just pay attention to the SPRV option, it can help with performance but may slightly delay shader compilation. Lastly, the game tends to look quite blurry by default, so I highly recommend enabling FSR and SMAA. When it comes to Ryujinx, there really aren't many settings that vary from machine to machine. So it's mostly about copying the recommended performance settings and choosing the visual filters that suit your taste. Just make sure to pay attention to a couple of key options. First, graphics backend multi-thread. This should definitely be enabled for better performance and more efficient GPU management. Also, consider enabling ASTC texture decoding. If you're using a GPU with 2GB of VRAM, I strongly recommend turning it on. But if your GPU has plenty of video memory to spare, you can safely leave it disabled. And well, that's the video. It's a bit long and kind of old school, but I really hope it helps people understand emulators a little better and figure out which one works best for them. I'll be doing deeper benchmarks and updating the settings in a more streamlined way as new updates come out. But for now, that's it.